Today we celebrate the 15th Sunday after Trinity, and my sermon this morning is based upon the gospel, which we heard coming to us from the sixth chapter of St. Matthew's Gospel. Do not be anxious about your life. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, my dear friends in our Lord Jesus Christ, today being the 13th of September, it was a certainly... I don't want to say a coincidence, but obviously two days prior to this was the anniversary of the attacks on our country on 9-11. And certainly every year provides ample opportunities, certainly for all of us that are old enough to remember what they were doing on that fateful day. But again, I can only speak for myself when I state that Every year at this time, on the anniversary of 9-11, as the different pictures are being shown and, they, and they're showing the newscast over or you're listening to the sound bites of, of the calls to 9-11 or the emergency services or the interviews and so on and so forth, it brings back a whole flood of memories certainly of the tragic events that happened not only in New York City, but also in Washington, D.C., and then obviously the plane going down where it did in Pennsylvania. I cannot help but think about the fact, and certainly I've thought about it before, and as I stated every year of this anniversary, it, it provides opportunity to reflect again, but I cannot help but think about, for example, all the people that worked and went to work that day in the World Trade Center. To them, it was certainly no, like, just like it was any other day, in other words. It was just like September 11th was exactly like September 10th, exactly like September 9th, so on and so forth. Whereas, I'm sure as you and I, can say the same thing about our daily routine because let's face it everybody has a routine of some sort of or, or another I know I certainly do I get up in the morning I get ready I make coffee I turn on the radio to hear the news the radio the the traffic report the weather report and so on I pick out what clothes I'm going to wear for that day and and fighting traffic, worrying about getting downtown. Again, all of us can think of our own daily routine that we do every morning. And those people that went to work that day, on that fateful day, on 9-11, those people that went to work that day did not think about anything else other than the events that I just described. All of those people were concerned. All of those people were worried about the very same things that I just stated. Anxious about getting up on time. Anxious about getting ready on time. Anxious on getting to work on time. Anxious more than likely of getting having reports done that were due that day or meetings that they had to go to. There's a whole host of things that they were anxious for that day, just like all of us are whenever we go to work or whatever we do. We're anxious for a whole host of reasons. But on that fateful day, little did they realize, for many of them, that that would be their last day here on earth. Certainly, this is something for each one of us to ponder. And so much of the reason why I myself and so many others in this great country of ours are so grateful, specifically, if I can divert just a little bit, digress just a little bit from my sermon topic, but why so many of us are so impressed with the fact that emergency personnel, whether they be firemen, policemen, or paramedics, how many of them on that fateful day rushed into those buildings, especially the World Trade Center that we're referring to, how many of them rushed headfirst into that building in order to save other lives and they never came out? Tragically, so many lives, whether they be civilian 
whether they be military, whether they be police and firemen and paramedics and so on and so forth. Tragically, so many people on that fateful day 14 years ago never saw 9-12. They never saw the rest of 9-11 because their lives were cut short by an act of barbarism and hatred and anger. But the point that I'm trying to make is this. None of us know when our time is up. And as we heard today in St. Matthew's Gospel, keep in mind, this is our Lord recounting as he is preaching to the masses as what's come to be known as the Sermon on the Mount. Our Lord is preaching to the multitude, and this is part of what he's emphasizing. Be not anxious about your life. Be not anxious about what you eat. Be not anxious about what you're going to drink. Be not anxious about the raiment that you are to wear. And yet, whether our Lord was preaching himself some 2,000 years ago, or whether I'm preaching to you today or preaching to myself today, it's the same thing, isn't it? All of us are anxious about tomorrow. All of us are anxious about what's going to happen to us. All of us are anxious if we're going to get this done, that done, this done, that done. We got to do this. We got to do that. Uh, again, this is a daily, a daily, if you will, occurrence. I certainly in my life, and I bet it is as yours as well. Those who are listening, we've got so much things to do and so few hours in a day. We have to be to this appointment. We have to set up that other appointment. We have to go shopping. We have to buy this. We have to take care of that. So the cat needs to be taken care of. The dog needs to be let out, so on and so forth. We have a whole host of things that grab our attention. And in a certain sense, I, I think the devil himself uses that opportunity to get his foot in the door, if you will. Because keep in mind, and this is certainly what our Lord was referring to, when we are anxious about our concerns and our daily life and our daily living, it takes the focus away from where our focus truly should be on, and that is on the Almighty. That is on God. Our focus as true, dedicated, committed Christians should always be focused on our Heavenly Father. But when concerns such as what clothes we're going to wear and where our next meal is going to come from and paying the bills and getting the reports done for work and, and the whole list goes on and on and on and on and on. When our focus is on those things, it takes the time away from God. In the Psalms, in the 55th Psalm, in the 22nd verse, we hear, Cast thy burden on the Lord, and he shall sustain thee. He shall never suffer the righteous to be moved. I had the, the great privilege and great honor to go over to St. Mary of the Woods, Indiana yesterday. And as you may or may not know, that is the home to the Sisters of Providence who run a college there. And it's near, it's in western Indiana. It's in the western part of the state. It's near uh, West Terre Haute. And if you've never been there, it's, it's a wonderful place to go because the campus itself is beautiful. They have an absolutely gorgeous, magnificent church. But the things that I like to go to there... When I and this is my third time of going there, but the two things that I really truly like to go to when I go there is a they have the shrine of Saint Mother Theodore Guerin, and Mother Guerin, as you may not be aware or may be aware as the case may be, Mother Guerin lived in the 1800s and she was from France and she her and along of I believe six of her sisters, six nuns, they traveled all the way from France over to western Indiana so that they could do God's work. 
And so they established the Sisters of Providence there, and they established the college, and so on and so forth. But the bottom line is, a few years back, Mother Guerin was declared a saint. And so here in Indiana, we have the opportunity to go and visit our own saint, Indiana's own saint. Now, I like to go there, and I don't go there very often due to the travel or due to the distance issues, but it's like when I was in Philadelphia, I got the opportunity to go very often to the Shrine of St. John Newman. Also, the other thing there is the Blessed Sacrament Chapel is absolutely exquisite. It's beautiful. In my humble opinion, it's breath breathtaking. It's so beautiful the Blessed Sacrament. And so both the Shrine of Mother Guerin and the Blessed Sacrament Chapel provide an excellent opportunity to go in there and pray and reflect on the beauty of God and reflect on God himself. Now, the reason I bring up this point is because yesterday I was in, that when I was there, I could not help but take notice both when I was in the Mother Guerin Shrine and also when I was in the Blessed Sacrament Chapel. I noticed that people would go through the little shrine area in Mother Guerin Shrine. They would go through the little, the little area where it was talking about Mother Guerin's life and had artifacts and so forth, which is very nice, things that belong to her and the sisters. And they would, I noticed that people would look at all of those things, but many of them didn't even come into the shrine part to stop and say their prayers. And I thought, isn't this interesting? I just took notice. I couldn't help but take notice. But why didn't they, why were they interested in looking at the life of Mother Garen, but they didn't come into the part where Mother Garen was at all? The same way, I, the same thing I noticed in the Blessed Sacrament Chapel, quite frankly, there was myself and, and some of the sisters and so forth that were in there praying in front of the Blessed Sacrament in quiet reflection. But I noticed there was at least one group. I know this because I was sitting in the back and I could hear the door opening and people talking and conversing. But there was at least one group that opened up the door to look inside of the Blessed Sacrament Chapel. They looked at it, they described it, they talked about it, but they did not come in and pray. They did not come in and take the time to pay the respects to our Blessed Lord there in the Blessed Sacrament. I couldn't help but notice these things because I think it describes us in general, and I, again, I'm included myself, so I'm not pointing any fingers at anybody else. But it just points out the fact that we are so anxious about getting on with our lives. We are so anxious about doing what we have to do. We are so anxious about getting on and taking care of what we need to do and getting on to the next place that we don't stop and take the time to pray. We don't take the time to pay our respects to our blessed Savior. We don't take the time to just stop what we're doing and conversing with God. That's what we should do in life. We shouldn't be so anxious, as our Lord stated, be anxious about what we're going to eat at our next meal, be anxious about what we're going to drink the next time we drink, be anxious about how we're going to clothe ourselves and where our clothing has come from. Be not anxious because God will take care of all of these things for us. Take your focus away from the things of the world, our Lord is telling us, so that you can use that time appropriately to focus on things that are important. Not to state that these other things are not important. Eating is obviously important. Drinking is obviously important. Clothing is obviously important. But yet God will take care of all these things for us if we just allow him. Don't be so caught up in the concerns of the world that you miss out on your opportunity to focus on God. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.